Welcome to our demo and introduction of Amazon Lex, informational bot use cases with Q&A Bot, Amazon Lex, and Amazon Kendra. Thanks for joining us today. I'm Carolyn Duncan. I am the Senior Business Development Lead for Amazon Lex from WWSO. First off, why are we talking about informational bot use cases? Ultimately, it's about our customers and what our customers' customers need. Customers want to be able to engage as the need arises. What does that mean? That means that they want to be able to interact with brands, with companies, with employers, etc. as the need arises, when and where they choose. So ultimately, they need to be able to ask questions and get them answered 24 seven through the channels that are most frictionless for them. We often refer to solutions relating to solving those questions and problems as conversational interfaces. So we see conversational interfaces as meeting this moment of the desire for natural interaction, on-demand or 24-7 interaction, accessible interaction, and effective communication and accurate responses as being the key to a great experience with a conversational interface. Our AI service, Amazon Lex, is the, one of the building blocks for those conversational interfaces to meet your customers' needs and in turn, their customers' and or employees' needs. Amazon Lex offers high quality text and speech language understanding. It's easy to use as one of our fully managed AI services on the AWS platform. It's seamlessly deployable and scalable through for multiple channels multiple experiences, multiple bots and languages, and it natively integrates with other AWS services like Amazon Connect, Amazon Kendra, and AWS Lambda for the ability to increase the experiences and channels where customers can interact with conversational interfaces. It's truly a service for building conversational interfaces using voice and text. Now, what are some of the key use cases we see with Amazon Lex? First off, we see contact centers, which you can think of as, how can I help? Where virtual agents can automatically help resolve customer questions and issues, guide them to the right agent in a call center, for example. Also informational bots, can I answer your question? So this is where voice and text chat bots for everyday requests and FAQs come up. As well as enterprise productivity bots, can I help you get more done? So these types of bots streamline the internal enterprise work activities uh, for getting transactions within a company uh, done, like IT support, etc. Today, we're going to talk about informational bots. So what's the problem we're trying to solve? With informational bots, the goal is to answer a question. And these are often repetitive questions, frequently asked questions, and where there's a lot of documentation. Uh, and so we see that conversational interfaces can help to resolve this. And more specifically, we see Amazon Lex with the help of things like Q&A bot, as well as Amazon Kendra as being supportive of this use case as well for today's focus. So what we're gonna go through in a few minutes is around the Lex and Q&A bot demonstration and see how you and, and your partners and customers can build upon the uh, scenarios that we've laid out. And why would you be looking at uh, using Lex and Q&A bot as an approach for your customer. Well, first off, uh, these scenarios can help to address and manage repetitive questions for your customers, customers or employees in a voice and text interface quickly. So Q&A bot as the open source initiative that brings a lot of these pieces together, it's a way for, for some customers to be able to, to get up and running with a Q&A bot or FAQ bot for frequently asked questions very quickly. And customers can also integrate that FAQ bot directly with Lex, with Amazon Kendra, with Amazon Connect, with Alexa as needed. So depending on the experience that they desire and need, you'll see in the examples that will follow how that's going to work together. Also, one of the key things to consider is, is the ability for Lex and Q&A bot in, in conjunction with Amazon Kendra's intelligent search to allow the informational bot to interface with a Q&A knowledge base. So the ability for, for Kendra to 
search customers on structured content to bring back the right responses is really a, a key factor in how customers might be using Lex and QA bot together. And next up, our demo of how to build and deploy the Q&A bot with Principal Solutions Architect Bob Strahan. And he'll take you through some general FAQ bot examples and then into some real world examples of how we see customers using the Q&A bot and Amazon Lex in their experiences. Take it away, Bob. Hello folks, I'm going to show you a demo of the Q&A bot solution. The place to start with Q&A bot is always our blog post. Uh, to get to the blog post is this URL here, it's amazon.com slash Q-N-A-B-O-T, Q&A bot. This is a shortcut to the uh, full blog post URL. Um, this is your one-stop shop for getting started um, and uh, learning all about the Q&A bot. It uh, gives you an overview of the main features of the Q&A bot. Uh, but most importantly, it takes you straight to these uh, launch stack buttons, which is where you can get started. Um, you can deploy the Q&A button in any of these eight regions. Uh, literally, you just click the button to launch the stack. Um, if you're already logged into AWS, it'll take you straight to CloudFormation. If you're not logged in, you'll have to log in, and then it's going to take you to this CloudFormation Create Stack page. Uh, you just click the next button here. Um, the parameters have got defaults already assigned, so really the only thing you need to do here to get up and running is to put your email address into this field called email and click the next button um, to launch the stack. When you do that, the uh, CloudFormation is going to install Q&A bot for you. Uh, it's probably going to take about 25 to 30 minutes and when it's done, you're going to get an email to this address in your inbox uh, with a temporary password and a link to log into the content designer. You'll click the link, um, it will, you enter the temporary password, it'll ask you to change the password, and then you'll get into the Content Designer user interface. This is what Content Designer looks like, um, except when you launch it for the first time, there's not going to be any entries in there, it's going to be sitting empty. I've already pre-populated mine with, the, with some questions and answers already. This is really how you get going. So let's, uh, let's get started with a quick demo uh, of how to add some content. Um, in Designer, you can open up this Tools menu on the left. There's a bunch of things you can do, but this one down here at the bottom, the QA Bot Client, is going to launch a full screen test client for the QA Bot. So, this is where we can uh, start simulating what an end user might experience when they're using the bot. So, we'll go ahead and we'll, we'll ask it a question What is the population of France? Okay, typo. Let's fix that. Okay, so I have not taught the bot how to answer this question yet. The bot's going to come back and tell me. Sorry, I don't know how to answer the question. So let's go ahead and teach the bot how to uh, how to answer this question about France. So we'll go back to our content designer. Let's add a new item. We'll give it an ID. So we'll just do zero dot population. This can be any name you want. Uh, it's good to have a naming convention. Sometimes you want to structure your questions with different categories or hierarchies. Uh, but it's really just a text string. Alright, so we're going to add our question. What is the population of France? Okay, and we'll say the answer is about 67 million. Okay, and we'll click create. Okay, now we've taught the bot how to answer that question. So let's go back here. We'll replay the same question over again. What is the population of France? And now the bot knows how to answer 67 million. Okay, let's see what else we can do here. We can probably make this look a little bit prettier. So let's go back into Content Designer. We'll take a look at that question we just added here. We can edit it using a little edit icon. Uh, we'll go down to the Advanced section this time. And you'll see that there's a section here for adding Markdown. Markdown is good for adding kind of rich text elements when we're using the web user interface. There's also an additional section here for SSML, which is good if we're using the voice channel. But for now, let's just focus on the markdown and let's see how that would work. So I'm going to paste in some markdown. Um, this is syntax. You can look this up on Google if you want. But um, the uh, little pound symbol here means that it's a header. Uh, the little double stars means that it's going to be uh, rendered in bold. But there's a whole kind of syntax around how to render rich text using markdown. So let's go ahead and click update. And we'll try our question again. 
And now it's given us a much prettier looking answer with a big header for France and 67 million in bold. Okay, so let's see what else we can do. Let's try asking the same question in French instead of English. Let's see what QNABot does. Maybe it's answered as in French. So QNABot has the ability to automatically detect the language uh, that the user is asking the question in and to respond in that same language. It uses Amazon Translate behind the scenes um, to translate the question into English so that it can look up the content uh, in the knowledge base, which was all in English. You'll notice that we had not populated a French answer or a French version of the question into Content Designer. Everything was just in English. Uh, so Translate actually normalizes all the incoming questions to English and will automatically translate the outbound answer into the user's local language. And we can try the same thing in Spanish, for example. And now we're going to get the answer back in Spanish. And this will work for any of the approximately 71 languages, I think, that Amazon Translate currently supports. OK, let's see what else we can do. Sometimes the machine translation is... Uh, not exactly what you want. You might want to curate the translation into different languages. So let's see if we can do that. Let's go back into our designer. And instead of relying on Amazon Translate to automatically convert this into French, let's say we want a more specific version of the answer for our French audience. So let's replace our markdown with this conditional markdown. You can see here now we've used this syntax called the handlebar syntax to detect if the user's language is in French then here's the answer that I want to render. Otherwise, I'm going to go back to the default, uh, which is in English. So that means if I'm speaking to it in any language other than French, it's going to use this English version or the machine translation of the English version. But if I'm speaking to it in French, it's going to use this explicit translation that I've provided in French. So let's go ahead and try that. OK, I'll go back to your client. Let's try the French version of the question again. Okay, and this time you can see, instead of getting the machine translation that we got earlier, we're now getting the explicit translation that we just provided for our French audience. Okay, so back in Content Designer, you remember we added one version of the question, uh, what is the population of France? So let's see if the bot can answer, if I don't ask exactly that question, let's try what is France's population? And you can see it was still able to find the answer. Let's try something else. Here I fat fingered France. Instead of typing the E on the keyboard, I type W in the keyboard. Let's see if it knows the answer. And it does. Uh, CUNYBOT has an optional fuzzy logic uh, matching capability which you can enable and it will tolerate um, minor typos or spelling errors um, in the question. But if I make the question too different from um, what I've taught it, let's try how many people live in France. Okay, I wasn't able to match that to the same to the same answer. So if I see I've got a, a monitoring dashboard that I'm going to show you later on. So if I see from my monitoring dashboard that people are asking the question in a way that QNABOT um, isn't able to find the answer, then you go back into Content Designer and you tune the item to allow it to answer the question in that way. So let's go ahead and ask that variation of the question, or add the variation of the question to the item, and now we can try again. Okay, so this is how you tune the bot to get smarter all the time. You kind of watch what people are doing, and if the variation is too different from what you've trained, then just go back in and add those variations to the bot. Okay, let's see what else we can do. Let's try um, what is the angle show. This is a question that I have pre-populated into my content designer. Um, this is actually part of the example questions that we can load. Um, if you work through the blog tutorial, you'll see how to add this question to the bot. But we actually have a packaged uh, set of questions you can import uh, that will give you uh, this and other uh, similar examples that I'm going to show you. So this one, you can see, actually attaches an image to the answer. We have an image of the, of the Echo Show. This is done using a feature called Response Cards. I can show you in Designer. Let me open up this item again. We'll go to the advanced section. When I scroll down, you can see here's where we can add response cards. These are an optional element, and you can put in a URL uh, which links to the image that we want to display. So that's what we did for this Amazon show. And we also have buttons 
which you can easily add to any answer. Let's go back to content designer. Right, let's find the item for show. This is a good place to show off the, the test capability of designer. So let's do what is the echo show. This is where we can actually test questions right within designer to see what answers come back. And you can see here is the item that matches that question. And this is a great place to locate an, uh, an answer that you might want to do further editing on. So let's open that one up in the editor and go to advanced and scroll down. You can see here's the response card. Uh, here is the image URL for that image of the Echo Show that we just saw. And here's where we've defined the buttons that we've added. The display text is the label you see, and that's what happens when you click the button. Uh, it actually sends this utterance back to the bot. Okay, so let's go ahead and click Q&A bot. And it actually sends what is Q&A bot uh, back to Q&A bot, and this is the answer that we get. Cunibot also supports the, the notion of um, topics where you can ask follow-up questions. So you'll notice here the last question that I just asked is what is the Q&A bot. So I can now ask a question like uh, how much does it cost? Okay. So you'll notice here I didn't say how much does what cost, but it remembers that I just finished asking about what is the Q&A bot. So it knows the context is Q&A bot when it answers the cost question. But let's change the context to what is the echo show. Try that one again. Okay, so now I'm talking about the echo show. Let's ask how much does it cost? And now it remembers that the last thing I talked about was the echo show. And it's going to answer uh, this ambiguous question um, in the context of the echo show. If I go back to content designer, you'll see this is done using the concept of topics. In the designer. So while we're here let's take a look at some of the additional features that we can add to, to an answer within the content designer. So we've already looked at the markdown answer, the SSML answer we spoke of. Um, Alexa reprompt I'm not going to mention that so if we're using an Alexa skill uh, which we're not demoing today. Uh, topic we just discussed, response cards I showed you briefly already. You can give the response card a title, uh, you can give it a link to an image, I'll display the image like we just saw with the, the Echo Show. Uh, you can also attach buttons, uh, which uh, send a message back to the bot when you click the button. We just took a look at that as well. Lambda hook I want to talk about for a second. Uh, sometimes there are questions that you don't want to have static answers, or you can't have static answers for. You need to retrieve the answer to the question from some external API or external system. Uh, Maybe you need to you know, call an API to get you know, today's version of the answer. You know, you're asking about what's the weather, for example. There's no static answer to that. You're going to have to retrieve the answer dynamically. Um, this uh, capability, the Lambda hook capability, gives us the, the, uh, the mechanism <coughs> to call a function that you would provide that knows how to retrieve that answer from that external API or system. Um, so what happens is whenever you ask a question, it locates at this item matches the question, but instead of returning a static answer, it's going to call this lambda function, AWS lambda function, that you specify here. And the lambda function can implement whatever business logic you want it to, uh, to retrieve the answer. Uh, you can also um, use the lambda hook mechanism to update external systems. This is how you would integrate with the, your CRM system or your student information system, your learning management system, whatever, whatever sort of back-end information systems you have, uh, maybe your trouble ticketing system. Um, you can use this to create a ticket, to look up the status of a ticket, to update the status of a ticket, all of that sort of thing. So this is, this is a very important mechanism to integrate Q&A bot uh, with, with external systems and to retrieve dynamic answers. Uh, this is useful as well when we do personalized responses with Q&A bot. Again, I'm not going to into demoing that today, but it's possible to authenticate users on the LAX web UI so that we know uh, with certainty who the user is because they've authenticated it with uh, an identity provider. Uh, so we do have a secure mechanism for doing that. And once we know who the user is, then we can uh, connect to an external system uh, and retrieve information that's personal to that user. So you know, students, for example, can ask, what are my grades? And it'll bring back their information. Or people can log trouble tickets and we know who the, who the end user was. Um, we can pass arguments into the Lambda hook as well. Uh, those arguments can be static or they can be retrieved from the session. These are kind of advanced capabilities. Um, see, illicit response is another feature. Um, 
So Q and A, what we've talked about today is is mostly about uh, answering users' questions, but you can also set up Q and A bot to ask questions as well. Um, and this is where you'd use elicit response. So if the bot asks a question, we can parse the response that the user gives us to that question. So one example would be we might want to ask someone what their name is, and they might reply and just say their name, Bob Strahan, or they might say my name is Bob Strahan, or I'm called Bob Strahan. So we need to be able to parse out you know the name. Uh, from the, the incoming utterance and that allows us to actually use a nested Amazon Lex bot to do that That's this notion of response bot hooks so we can parse the response to a question again the blog post explains a little bit more about how that works and the, the um, answers to the question get put into session attributes and this allows us to specify the namespace for the session attributes again all, all advanced capabilities if you read the blog post you'll find out more about it document chaining is an interesting feature that allows us to link items together um, Often this is used in conjunction with the illicit response for building decision trees where you can ask a question and then based on the user's answer to that question you can build in a rule here that determines well, what's the next question you want to ask. So you can have this kind of guided path um, of questions that you ask where you know, each question is based on the answer to the previous, previous questions. Uh, guided navigation is if you want to build like a guided tour where you can take people from like one place to another so it can be used to build tutorials where you're going from one topic to another um, you can actually build virtual tours that way where you're linking items together there's a whole separate blog post about that uh, about doing guided navigation with QA bot and then bot writing is an interesting new feature that we, we just added where um, the idea here is that you may have multiple bots but you want to have one entry level bot so you know, this allows you to have specialty bots for different departments. You can have a human resources bot or an IT bot uh, where those departments maintain the content of their own bot and then we can create a supervisor bot that sits on top of them all and use a bot writing capability to allow the user to switch context and get to the specialty bot that they want. Sort of like a microservices approach to, to bots where you can have multiple bots but kind of orchestrate it under a single supervisor bot. So those are some of the, the more advanced uh, figures of QA bot. So let me go back to the web client again. I'm going to demonstrate voice to you real quick. So let's click the little icon here at the bottom. What is the Q and A bot? QA bot is great, but I want to tell you a secret. Can you believe it? So I don't know if you're able to hear that. Hopefully that picked up in the microphone. But you'll notice that the spoken answer was different than the answer that I'm seeing on the web page. So how did we do that? Let's go back into the designer. Let's find that um, question for what is the Q and A bot. Okay. Uh, by the way, you can see here that there was more than one answer came back when I typed in Q and A bot. So this gives us a chance actually to see what the other candidate answers might have been for this question. Uh, the reason it returned the answer for this top one is because it had the highest score coming back. But sometimes um, you can see that there were other answers that came close to the same score. And you can actually use this to ascertain whether you're getting the answer you want. And if you're not, you can actually change the way you've got the example questions in there to, to control the scoring capabilities. So you can tune it a little bit to get the answer that you do want. But anyway, let's go into this answer and see why the voice uh, response was different. If I go into the advanced section, I can see here's the markdown that I'm seeing on the web client. But here I actually specified an SSML answer. SSML stands for Synthetic Speech Markup Language. And this is what determined the voice response. And this works when you're using voice on the web UI. Um, if you had Q&A bot integrated with Amazon Connect, it's going to respond with the, the voice responses when you're using voice on the call center. Um, or if we had exported this as an Alexa skill, which you can do, then with Alexa, it's also going to use the, the SSML to render the voice. Um, and this allows you to add tags where you can add emphasis to different parts of the answer. Um, you can use speech effects like whispering. Uh, so there's a lot of control you can have over the spoken answer. And this is good because, especially when you're using the web UI, you can actually have it speak a more concise version of the answer um, using the SSML, but you can also use the rich text um, for the visual answer that you see on the web page. So you get the best of both worlds. Okay, so so far I've just shown you the full screen client uh, that comes with the, the Q&A bot for the designer. Uh, we have a companion project which we uh, call the Lex Web UI. Um, you can get to it, there's another blog post. You get to it as Amazon.com chatbot UI. 
Okay, and that will redirect us to the next web UI. Uh, this allows us to install a full-featured embeddable web client that you can put onto your own website. Um, and I'll show you an example of that. Um, you can install it, by the way, using the same concept that I showed you with Q&A Bot. Uh, when you install it, it'll ask you a few parameters. Uh, it will give you a little snippet of HTML once it's installed that you can actually integrate into your own HTML page in order to put a bot um, onto your own page. So let's take a look at a couple of sites. These are a couple of our customers that have already installed uh, the Q&A bot using the Lex Web UI. So this is Oklahoma State University in Oklahoma City. This is what the Lex Web UI looks like when it's installed. And this is connected to Q&A bot behind the scenes. And you'll notice that they've been able to brand it, style it, um, to match the color scheme on the website. Okay, here's another example. This is from uh, Guide Dogs for the Blind in the UK. Uh, they have also used the Q&A bot. Okay, so it opens up minimized, but you can click this little button here to maximize it. This, believe it or not, is the same Lex Web UI that we just saw at Oklahoma State, but obviously they styled it and branded it um, very differently to match their website. Uh, they've actually added a lot of accessibility features. Lex Web UI is an open source project, just like Q&A bot. And both these projects um, are available in GitHub. Uh, so anybody can actually access source code and make custom changes for themselves so you're not locked in in any way you can make your own changes or hire a consultant or AWS professional services to, to customize it um, if you need um, extra features and that's what the, the guide dogs uh, did in the UK they um, actually took our Lex web UI and enhanced it to add some accessibility features made it screen reader compatible they added this uh, little widget here to have sound effects so every time a message comes in it it makes a little sound effect, like an audible sign that there's a new message to be read. And they uh, contributed that back to our open source project in the form of a pull request. So we always encourage customers to do that if they're going to make changes that can benefit the community. Uh, send us a pull request and we'll try and incorporate that into the next release, either of the Lex Web UI or the, or the Q&A bot. Um, so let's look at, at another one that I set up for this demo. Okay, so this um, is Q&A bot again, different styling yet again. Um, this is just a screenshot of uh, one of the AWS pages. Um, this is not a real site uh, right now, but it's trying to show you how, how it would look if you were to put this on, on a real site and again how you can brand it. So I'm going to use this for, uh, for some of the demos uh, going forward. You'll notice with the Lax Web UI, uh, you can tell it to automatically send uh, an utterance to the bot when the page loads. So here, when the page loaded, I sent hello Q&A bot uh, to the Q&A bot and it was able to come back with an initial answer. So you can control what happens whenever the page first loads. And if I go back to designer, I can close out this. Uh, I can see that I have, um, let me go back to the questions tab, do a quick refresh. Uh, I can see I have an item here for hello Q&A bot and that controls my initial response uh, I'm seeing. If I go down here, there's the markdown that I just saw rendered, and I had a couple of buttons. Okay. So let's try that quickly. So this demo is meant to be a, like a taxation assistant bot, so I can click taxes for citizens. This shows me how you can use buttons to provide guardrails for your users. It's always a best practice. You don't want to have the bot just say, hey, ask me a question. Because folks typically you know, will get a little bit stuck. They won't know which questions to ask, or they'll ask a question that the bot doesn't know how to answer. So you're going to get a better user experience if you can provide guardrails. Uh, buttons are a great way to do that, where you can kind of give them suggestions as to some of the topics that they might want to ask about. You can actually implement like a hierarchy as well here. So you know, I click taxes for citizens, but it's now asking me a follow-up. Well, you know, am I interested in federal tax returns? Am I interested in state returns? You can click federal tax returns. You can see it's taking me down a path here. Uh, let's say I'm interested in corporate business tax returns. Okay, do I want to know how you file them? And I eventually get to the answer. So I've gone down a little decision tree here where it's you know, suggesting where I might want to go next. Uh, I could, of course, just have typed in directly how to file corporate taxes. I didn't need to go through the decision tree. If I knew my question, I could get straight to the answer. And then I've made it easy for people to start over just by clicking the Start Over button. Now you'll notice here again I'm making good use of Markdown with embedded links that I can click on to go look at additional information. Um, every answer has this little thumbs up and thumbs down icon. So this is an easy way for people to provide feedback as to whether they like the answer or not. So let's say you know I'm not too happy with this answer. 
and click the little thumbs down button and it says thank you for your feedback we'll try and improve the answer behind the scenes it's going to log the fact that the user did not like the answer for this particular question and I'm going to be able to see that later in my monitoring dashboard and that gives me an opportunity to come back and fix the answer to that question Web UI has a little integrated help button so you can ask help at any time um, you should always provide a response to the help question in the Q&A bot uh, to give people guidance okay let me start over again here's an example of where again I can use Markdown to do something even fancier in this case I've actually embedded a video into the answer uh, so this again shows you the power of being able to uh, embed rich media an international student's guide to US tax returns. Okay, so you can provide a very rich and engaging user experience uh, using this web UI. Okay, so so far I've shown you how to uh, get QA bot to answer questions based on um, explicit questions and answers that you've added um, using this content designer. Um, we also have the ability to integrate with Amazon Kendra, which really increases the power of QA bot significantly. Um, Kendra is, is our AWS enterprise search service. It's based on machine learning, so it can do natural language understanding of the questions, and it will attempt to find the answer from an index which you have populated into Amazon Kendra. You can configure the Kendra integration in the Q&A bot settings page. There's a bunch of different things that you can control about Q&A bot and the way it behaves. You can enable multi-language support here. You can enable sentiment support, sentiment scoring of questions. There's a ton of advanced features. Um, if you read through the blog, you'll, you'll uh, learn about what a lot of these mean. But here is where you can provide the index of an Amazon Kendra index that you've already set up. So I've gone ahead and populated that into Q&A bot here. And this allows um, the bot to extend its knowledge base into the, um, all the documents that Amazon Kendra has indexed. Uh, and this allows it to respond to questions from um, unstructured documents like Word documents, PDF documents, etc. Uh, that you might have, have added. So let's try a question that content designer does not have an answer for. So I've not entered the answer to this question. Uh, why do I pay taxes? Let's try it. See, there's no data in my uh, curated knowledge base here. But because I've enabled Kendra integration, there's a chance that QA bot might be able to get the answer via Kendra. So let's ask the question here why do I pay taxes? QNABOT is going to realize that it doesn't have the answer from Elasticsearch, so it's going to extend its question out to Amazon Kendra. And you can see here that Kendra did come back with some results. Okay, so it says while I did not find an exact result, uh, these search results from Kendra might be helpful. And it's come back with some information on taxation policy. Um, and it's given us a link actually to the document uh, where it was able to source this answer from. So I can click that link and it's going to open up the document in a separate window for me and I could scroll through that and see where I got this answer from. It uses S3 signed URLs here because this document actually exists in an S3 bucket which is where Kendra crawled it to create the index um, and I can expose that uh, through my web client by signing the URL to it so it doesn't have to be a publicly accessible document. Okay so that was an example of a document search result. Let's try a different sort of question to see what else Kendra can do. And much of the death benefit is non-taxable. I actually have a typo in my question there, but luckily Kendra doesn't care. And this time, instead of giving me um, like an extract from the document, Kendra is able to get straight to an exact answer. So able to tell me the answer here is ten thousand uh, dollars. Sometimes it can do that. If, if Kendra can locate a precise answer to a question, to an exact question like how much or where is or who is, questions like that, it will try and give you a nice concise answer rather than just a document extract. We've also recently added the ability in Q&A Bot to automatically um, crawl web pages. So let me show you how that works. This allows us to use Kendra to find the answer to uh, a question based on the content of a web page. Okay, so you can see here there's a setting value for Kendra index or URLs where I provided a comma separated list of URLs. These happen actually to be AWS service FAQs. So here I've got three different URLs. And we can go over here and we can take a look at the Kendra web page index. I've already run the indexer. This is going to run behind the scenes. It's going to scrape the content of those web pages, add them to my Kendra index, so that uh, via Kendra, QNABOT can now answer questions based on the contents of those web pages. 
Okay, I can start the indexing here again if I wanted to index again right now and crawl those web pages. Um, also in the settings I can configure a schedule so it will automatically kick off on that schedule to pull down the latest copy of those web pages. So let's see, one of the web pages that I had indexed was the Amazon Kendra FAQ. So let's go back here and clean up some of these windows that I don't need. Okay, so let's ask a question about Kendra. What is Amazon Kendra? And you'll see Cunybot knows the answer to that question. Again, this was not explicitly provided in the Content Designer, but via Kendra, it was able to get me the answer from the Kendra FAQ webpage. And I've got a source link to that webpage so I can click if I want to go see the full Kendra FAQs. Okay, let's try a follow up question. What file type does it support? And here Kendra is able to give me a more exact answer. This is a suggested answer to the question as opposed to just uh, search results. Um, and it was able to tell me that Kendra supports unstructured and semi-structured data and HTML, etc. And again, it gives me a link off to the FAQ pages. Okay, so this shows you how you can very quickly and powerfully extend uh, Q&A bot's ability to answer questions through integration with Kendra. Really powerful feature. Uh, and it allows you to very quickly add um, significant knowledge to Q&A bot with very little work just by indexing documents. Again, you can monitor the questions that people are asking the bot and if they're asking a question like this a lot, what is Amazon Kendra, then we do have the ability to go in and create a more um, concise answer to that question rather than relying on the document extract to answer the question. We could add that same question into Content Designer and provide a, a more curated answer, maybe with some embedded images and links, etc. Okay, so so far I've been talking about Q&A bot being able to answer questions from its own knowledge base or from uh, Kendra, but what happens if Q&A bot isn't uh, able to answer the question from a user and the user wants to speak to a person? This is where we can leverage an in uh, integration with Amazon Connect, where you have human beings sitting in a contact center. Um, Amazon Connect supports live chat now. So one option we could have done is put the Q&A bot into that contact center and use live chat um, through Amazon Connect. Uh, in this example, we've not done that. Q&A bot is not sitting inside the contact center. It's uh, We're interacting directly with Q&A bot using the Lax web UI. Um, but we're working on a prototype feature, and I'm gonna show you a demo here that's not yet mainstream, but hopefully uh, we're gonna get this um, implemented over the next uh, little while. So I'm gonna show you a prototype demo. I hope that it works of how we can use the same user um, interface uh, to connect to a live chat agent. So before I do that, I have already logged into um, Amazon Connect as an agent. Okay, so here's my agent uh, control panel. I've logged in as Agent Bob over here. Uh, so I'm going to attempt from my uh, web page. I'm going to attempt to start a live chat uh, with Agent Bob over here, well, with the contact center. It just happens that Agent Bob is the only agent sitting listening on the contact center. But let's go ahead and try that. I'll start the live chat. Um, before starting the live chat, it wants to know my name. So my name is Bob. Okay. So now it's attempting to connect to Amazon Connect. All right, thanks for connecting. Tells me time in the queue is less than five minutes. Now I've been placed in queue to chat with an agent. And over here, Agent Bob is now seeing that there's an incoming call. So as an agent, Bob can either accept or reject the chat. Here we're going to accept the chat. So again, this window is what the agent sees in the contact center. This window is what the end user sees. So now as an end user, I can see that agent Bob has joined the call. And Bob is typing me a message. Okay, you see Bob's message. Agent Bob's message has appeared here on my... Uh, Next web UI, and I can say I am stuck. The bot doesn't know the answer. Okay, so you get the idea. I'm now having a conversation with Agent Bob, and he's going to say I can help, um, and so forth. He's going to help out and answer the question. Uh, whenever the conversation is done, the conversation can be terminated either by the agent by clicking the end chat on the control panel or by the end user 
I'm clicking the end live chat. I'll go ahead and terminate the call. And once the live chat is over, uh, the user is taken back to the QA bot. So, again, this is very much a prototype feature. Um, it will probably be enhanced a bit before it gets released in the open source project. Um, one thing we're thinking about doing is instead of switching the whole conversation context to um, to the live agent where you lose conversation history, uh, we just keep it all scrolling in one uh, continuous history. So you can see the bot conversation followed by the agent conversation, followed by additional bot conversation if you want. Okay, finally I want to show you um, the ability to enter feedback into the bot. So again we can provide a button to make this a little bit easier, but um, QA bot supports the ability to capture and solicit information from the end user. So here I've initiated that by typing feedback. Um, in our help page, we could tell the user, you know, enter feedback at any time, tell us what you think. Uh, so you can make it you know, provide guardrails so that folks know to enter feedback. And we can automatically take people into a feedback loop, for example, after the end of an agent conversation. We could solicit feedback to let people know um, that they can tell us how, how that went. Um, or at the end of a bot interaction, we can ask people to enter their feedback. So let's go ahead and say, I thought it was great. All right, and the bot can do sentiment detection on that response. Um, see here in this example response, we detected that the sentiment was positive. Um, we've logged this behind the scenes. Okay, so let's move that window out of the way again. And the last thing I'm going to show you is back in Content Designer. Let's go back to our main page. Back to the Tools menu. Uh, we have a Kibana dashboard, so I'm going to show you this quickly. This is where we can get some visibility into how people are using the, the Q&A button. Okay, so click Q&A button dashboard. Set time range, let's go for the last one hour. Okay, so this is going to show us some of the interactions that we've just been doing on this demo. Um, you can see here we've got a bunch of different widgets here. This is showing us a number of requests that have come in. It's monitoring the sentiment of those requests, so I can tell here whether users are generally um, expressing their questions in a neutral way or if their frustration is building and they're starting to um, show signs of annoyance at the bot. We can detect negative sentiment. Uh, this gives us a sense of really for what our user's experience is when they're using the bot. Okay, this shows us uh, the clients that are coming in. Are we using text? Are we using voice? Uh, this gives us a word cloud of the different types of, of questions uh, that I've been asking the bot. Uh, this one here is a very important little widget. This shows me a word cloud of questions that the bot does not know the answer to within its own content management database. So we call this a no hit. This is where the question does not match the curated answers. Uh, maybe we reached out to Kendra uh, to answer those questions, or maybe these are questions that we uh, we need to add answers to. So this is where you can see, you know, do do I want to go back into Content Designer and add an answer to these questions in order to uh, provide a more curated response to the user. And I should be able to see the feedback that I've received as well from the thumbs up, thumbs down icons. Um, here you can see there's a problem with the display. This sometimes happens if I don't have enough uh, data in here, so I can actually uh, make that full screen and that'll resolve that problem. I can see my negative feedback here, how to file corporation taxes. You remember I clicked the thumbs down button when we had navigated to that answer. Um, normally you'd expect to see a lot more um, answers there if people are using the system. I only had that one thumbs down that I did during the demo. Okay folks, I think that is um, the demo for now. Um, there are other features in the Q&A bot. If you read through the blog post, again remember you can get to the blog post easily at amazon.com slash q-n-a-b-o-t um, and this contains your entry point for all the different features um, that you can see. So please do go read the blog post, um, install it for yourselves, um, explore um, all of these features, um, and hopefully you'll be able to put the bot to, to good use. Thank you for watching. And finally, you've seen a lot of information around how we've helped customers think about Lex and, and Q&A bot and other services together. And so I'd encourage you 
to learn more about the customer scenarios and where you might think about introducing this or, or diving deeper with customers and partners. I encourage you to check out our reInvent 2020 Build a Chatbot Using AWS Q&A Bot presentation. Uh, and there's some customer examples from Oklahoma State University, Oklahoma City, guidedogs.org.uk. And then more generally, there's our AWS machine learning blog with Q&A bot. There's also from October of 2020, our team led a great tech talk around creating a Q&A bot with Amazon Lex and Amazon Kendra to answer questions. That gives even some more examples and some uh, additional architecture and uh, customer qualification considerations. So thank you for your time today, and we look forward to answering your questions in the future. Thanks.